Hello, friends. Today, I'm gonna walk you through my mom's collection. Uh, like, maybe a couple months into collecting records, my mom gave me her collection from college. I've since given it back to her, and I think there's some more that I've added to this, but I'm gonna walk you through it because this was kind of the base for me finding music. All right, let's get into it. Right off the bat, two great Simon and Garfunkel albums, Greatest Hits and Bring Over Troubled Water. I just listened to Greatest Hits for the first time for my 30 in 30 days video, and I am kind of on a Simon and Garfunkel kick, so it's nice to start with that. Steely Dan's Pretzel Logic. It's weird because I know these albums just from listening to them because of her, but uh, I don't have much to say because they're not my albums. I have never seen this one before. I don't know where she got the best of spirit. I don't remember ever having this part of my collection. So, um, I'm very confused where this album came from, but it's 1973. Uh, I'm gonna have to give this a listen. Catch Bullet 4. Oh, Donna Summer. These two are my albums, actually. <laughs> she just never gave them back. Both of these were four bucks. We have Bad Girls and she works hard for the money. I bought these albums um, because of Bob's Burgers and Bob's Possession with Donna Summer, and I don't regret it. Oh, I like this one, uh, Desolation Boulevard. I really like this because in the top left corner, it says Ilfi. That's a uh, streetwear brand here in Cleveland, and I always thought that was really cool. Like I, 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 I'm guaranteed that there's more to this word, but I always thought that this was really cool. And I now like seeing the Honda, seeing as I have a Honda motorcycle, so that's cool. Next act, we have Iron Butterfly Live. This is the trippiest album cover I've ever seen. It's very cool though. Very collage based. 1970. I'm not remembering a lot of these albums. Apparently I didn't do a very good job listening to the records my mom gave me. Uh, the Letterman, Everything's Good About You. Lobo of a Simple Man. Donnie and Marie. <laughs> I, yeah, I can truthfully say I never listened to Donnie Osmond. Uh, Peter, Paul and Mary, See What Tomorrow Brings. Now this I've listened to. What a great album cover. This is exactly how I photograph things. Uh, centered, lots of negative space. A uh, very low horizon line. <sighs> Love it. This is how I design an album cover. If I was gonna make an album, uh, I would design just like this. More Peter, Paul, and Mary. I think I have this album. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I have that. Queen. Wait. I don't remember, okay. I think my mom's been sneaking records. Has she been going to the record store without me? I don't remember this one in my in my collection. Rolling Stones. This one feels like mine too. I'm pretty sure this is mine. <laughs> Seals and Crofts. I have this one. Another Seals and Crofts. <laughs> the best of Shanana. Perfect. Oh, what a great cover. Get a job. It's the first song on the album. Love it. Get a job, you hippie. And another shot on I don't remember either of these albums. Where is she getting these records from? I know where I go to get my records, but I don't know where she's been going. Jim Croce's Greatest Hits. Photographs and Memories is actually in Boston on the cover. I can feel it raised. That's cool. Very cool. Deep Purple. I'm pretty sure I bought this record at a garage sale. I am almost certain that this is mine as well. Neil Diamond. You don't bring me flowers. Uh, so the last video I made was me going through my favorites. I mentioned Hotel California and how my mom didn't have any eagles when she gave me her collection, but I had gotten some for her. This is one of those albums. You can see by the sticker that's up here. Uh, I paid seven dollars for this Hotel California album, and it's in really good condition. Um, I believe I also got a, these, this one of these nights album, but both of two of my favorite albums. Four Seasons, solid, can't go wrong. 
Another Four Seasons, The Golden Hits. Four Seasons, Second Vault of Golden Hits. And then another album that I bought for her, which is Fleetwood Mac Rumors. Uh, she has a station on Pandora that she listens to a lot. Um, and Fleetwood Mac Rumors comes on, I'd say at least once every five songs. So I bought this album, and then a week later I saw another copy for five bucks. And I've been looking for it for so long that I just, I felt like I owed it to myself to grab the second copy because I looked for months and months to find just one copy. And I didn't know what I was gonna do with it, but then I uh, got home and I was like, hey, you should take it. And I've heard her listen to it at least three times. So. The best of Guess Who? I don't know a lot about Guess Who, but I love this photo. I love this backlit. I love, I'm assuming this is the sun, but it looks like it's like lit like a photograph. That's a cool photo. I like the the haze that the film has. And I, I, I love this. Now, a lot of people, I, I shouldn't say a lot of people, I don't want to generalize, but I find that people look for the quality of the album, especially the cover, uh, not just the disc, but I love when like there's pieces missing and like this is all kinds of warped. I'm wondering if the basement didn't flood because these were stored in a box laying down like flat and they were stored in a box underneath our stairwell until I was in high school. And so I'm wondering if this damage was back when she was listening to them in college or if this was while they were under the steps. But but I love this. I love the texture. I love that there's like missing pieces. Uh, there's pieces like all over on the floor right now. So I really like that in a record. I think it adds character. All right. Oh, this is her favorite album. So we have Chicago's Greatest Hits, and then we've got this Chicago album, which all the covers of Chicago, I don't know them by heart, and they're just labeled Chicago. Um, but we've got this Chicago album, we've got this one that I bought at the exchange for a dollar. I have another copy of this album that I bought for her. Uh, I bought her this album. Here's a duplicate of that. And then this one, which is labeled $5. I'm pretty sure, except for the Greatest Hits album, I bought her all of these. And I'm not sure why I have uh, two copies of each album in here. And I say I because I'm pretty sure some of those are mine. No, I think I gave those to her. But I think that I might have accidentally given her, like, I had the four and there's two and two. And I think I gave her one of each and then I also gave her one of each again. So she has my... Uh, my records. But it's fine, because I'm clearly not missing them. And I have my own copy of Chicago's Greatest Hits, so I think I'm kind of covered. I'm being honest. Next up we have Beatles 1962-1966, as well as the Beatles 1967-1970. Uh, the Blue Album is in my favorite selection, but uh, I actually gave her these. These were part of the collection Lori gave me, and because I already had them, I was like, you like the Beatles? Here, take these. I don't think I've ever heard or listened to those. Blood, Sweat, and Tears. I have my own copy of this. Not my favorite band in the world. Uh, it's okay. It's just not something I'm gonna put on a regular basis. I don't know that she listens to it on a regular basis either. Boston. This was like one of the first couple albums that I listened to of hers. And I fell in love with it immediately. And I'm glad that I have my own copy. Because it's just, this is this. If you're looking to find like a start in 70s rock music, I'd start with Boston. That's my recommendation. Uh, Best of Bread. I actually had given this to her and it was, when I was organizing the other day, it was lodged in my collection and I was like, this is definitely yours. Um, and she put it on the other day and <laughs> they're a funky band. Uh, Carpenters, Christmas Portrait, and then I'm assuming this is also Carpenters? Yep. Horizon. I love women's fashion in the 70s. I love women's hair and women's fashion from the 70s. That's all I'm going to say about that. And then last stack, first one up is Air Supply Greatest Hits. I've never listened to Air Supply, uh, but this, I like the sketch of this cover. I like how intimate they look on the back of this. 1980. 
80s music's not really my jam, but uh, maybe I'll give it a listen, maybe not. Almond Brothers, Brothers and Sisters, classic. This is what got me into Almond Brothers. I love this album. I love the inside cover of this album. So cool to see them with all their kids and just, it looks like so much fun. I don't know if this was like where they recorded the album or if this is like just part of the photo shoot, but I love when musicians look like they're enjoying their work. It makes me really happy. I like seeing artists happy because I feel like art is so often portrayed as needing to, it requires some type of uh, depression or some type of plague to uh, be successful. And so seeing these people being so happy and knowing that their music is still around 50 years later, I really appreciate that. <laughs> Average white band, uh, there's no record in here. My mom, uh, when she gave me this in high school, she almost took this away from me and I snatched it from her like, yeah. um, cause I think it's silly. And she was embarrassed that uh, she listened to this in college. I am not because I think it's funny and I actually bought myself a copy of this album just because of the cover. Bachman Turner Overdrive, Not Fragile, another great place to start with some of these rock music. Um, Boston's self-titled album, Not Fragile, and Bad Company's Bad Company were my first three introduction to 70s rock and I would recommend it. It was a good experience for me. Bachman Turner Overdrive 2, I believe that I bought this for her based on the sticker because all of her records don't have like price tags, so I'm assuming I bought this for her. Bad Company, like I said, this is where I started. Uh, I gave her this copy of Straight Shooter. This came with Lori's collection, the 150 that she sent me, and I already had a copy, so I gave her this one. Next up we have Beach Boys Greatest Hits. Now I think she bought this when I took her to my favorite record store a while ago. I think this was like three or four years ago when I took her with me. Um, but I'm jealous because I would have bought this album because I don't have any Beach Boys. That's not true, I have one Beach Boys album. I have Coop, Deuce Coop, yeah. Um, but I would have gladly bought this album, but I guess she beat me to it. And then lastly, Band on the Run, Paul McCartney and Wings. This album is very special to me. I like this one a lot, as you can see this one also got damaged, but uh, there's also a portion of the actual record that skips because there's like just like a piece of glue stuck to it, and I love that. It makes me so happy, it, it just, it's so charming because I can see the wear and tear and the use and the love. Like my mom loved these albums when she was in college, and it's so... Like, you can feel that listening to this music, and I think that's why I love collecting records so much, is because not only do I get to enjoy the music, but I can feel someone else's love for the thing that I now have, and that's really special to me, so. I really like that. Uh, thank you so much for watching this far. I hope you enjoyed me going through my collection. I have a Patreon where I have a list of all the records that I own. I guess if you were really interested, I could make a list. Well, you already saw everything, so never mind. You don't Uh, but thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.